hello. Uh, it is Michael Sean Corby here. I am the uh, chairman of the Naha Committee. Hello, thanks for the wave, waving back at you. Um, and we are super excited today to kick off a brand new series of live events, something that we've never done really anything like before. We've, we've done some registered live web events, but as we know, uh, we're all in a situation now where we're looking for information, uh, we're looking to stay creative, um, we're looking to connect with other stylists, so um, I'm personally so excited to be here to kick this off for you. Uh, this series will continue, and I'll tell you our other fantastic guests um, that will happen uh, throughout the weeks to come. Uh, our, our first guest, Chelsea Von James, she's waiting in the wings as we speak, and her and I will enjoy a Canada Dry. Apparently, I have a beverage with all my guests. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But what I wanted to do first was to first say, um, on behalf of Naha and the entire community, community of stylists, we are really um, behind you right now. Our thoughts and our prayers and, and more importantly, our actions are with you right now. We're doing everything we can to help. As you know, we moved uh, the Naha registration dates, uh, entry dates, um, when to have your work submitted dates. So I'll give you all that information today as well. But the main thing is we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to compete. We, we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to see what it's like to receive a Naha. And that's why our first guest, um, we're really going to talk about how Naha has changed her life. Um, Look, we know that you all have a lot of creativity already, um, and we know that you're just bursting to do something with it. You're tired of working on mannequin heads. You're wondering, what can I do to actually um, start working toward my Naha shoot? So don't worry, we have some answers for you, um, and we'll we'll do that in our live create um, conversation. So most importantly, stay creative, plan your creative projects, Learn how to make things happen from home, which we'll be talking to with many of our artists. Um, take time um, to really focus on Naha. We have this extra time at home. Um, and most importantly with these calls, we wanna give everyone a chance to contribute and to be a part of it. Uh, before we get into these events, I would like to introduce the two brand new award. Uh, that we'll be giving. So we have one that is for your salon culture, which is if you have an inspiring salon culture, and, and we don't mean you just have to be a salon that um, does amusing, amazing photo shoots. Um, it could be a salon doing charitable work. Um, it could be salons that are doing things away from home to support each other and their clients. Um, so we're, we're giving an award for that. And then one I feel very strongly about um, as well is we're doing an educator of the year. So for the inspiring salon, because many of you have been asking me, how do I get involved with entering for this? So let me read you the rules because I know we don't always get to the web website to read it. Um, you may be nominated as a salon um, or you may enter your own salon. Okay, so you can enter your own salon or you may be nominated by another. You need three images that represent your salon environment and how the salon inspires stylists, clients, and the community. I would highly recommend you don't just shoot tables and chairs and mirrors and theirs. Shoot people. This is really about the culture of your salon. So yes, we wanna see if you have a unique space, but we're moving away from just places and more toward people. So keep that in mind when entering. We need two letters of support. This ideally would need to be from outside of your salon. So two letters of support from your community, letting us know about the culture of your salon. And then a brief description. You could write this, of course, up to 250 words that depict how the salon impacts its stylists, its clients, and its community. So 
Really simple. Nominate yourself or somebody else is going to nominate you. Three images that not, that really represent your culture and your salon. And remember, don't just make it about the tables and chairs and mirrors and the theirs. Make it about you, the people. And then two letters of support from outside your salon, four walls. Um, and then just a brief description. Write it as a team. A salon owners or managers could write it, but get that letter in. And then we've all been inspired by an educator. There's not one person watching right now who hasn't been inspired one way or another by an artist on stage or someone who came into their salon. And we felt it, Naha, and PBA. And remember, PBA sponsors, they, they've created Naha. They really are the machine behind Naha. Um, they wanted to do something that gives back to these educators. So this is for mentors and teachers who influence the trends, who are innovative. Look, this could go to a giant platform artist. This could go to someone who is on the ground level, going in and out of salons 10 times a day. It really will vary. So here are the educator requirements. They must be nom. You may be nominated, or you can enter yourself. So hey, if you think you're super fabulous, or you know you are, go ahead and enter yourself. If not, enter someone else. Um, three images that represent you educating or presenting. So um, this is not just your work, although it could include your work. This is really about showing you in action. A 30 second video of you educating. And you know what? This will be good practice for the new way to educate, which is in the digital world. So a 30 second video of you presenting um, could be a quick tip, but you can't do that much in 30 seconds. So it can be a portion of what you're doing. Two letters of support We'd like those to be up to 100 words. Um, and that obviously needs to be from someone besides yourself. Uh, a brief description, 250 words up, on why you should be a selected or why that person should be selected. And then on the behalf of the educator, you, um, yeah, so I got, I gave all the requirements, sorry. Reading my notes and my contacts are drying up and I'm thinking, oh goodness. Um, so I'm very excited about all of that coming. But I, before I know you're all, where's Chelsea? Where's Chelsea? We wanted to let you know that you can, you know, get out there, enter, um, submit your collection and releases and entry forms. Enter, entry opens June 11th and all entries must be received. Instead of August, folks, you have all the way till October 2nd. So you have some time still. So make sure you do that. All right. So I've got all that out of the way. We really wanted you to hear about these new categories. What I'd like to say now is that Naha Creative Conversations is about to kick off with Chelsea James, but please put into your calendar next week, April 24th, we're going to have Christopher Dove and John Simpson. Um, they're going to be telling you how to really build your, your collections from home so you can start thinking about it. We're going to have Charlie Price talking to you about really the, the soup to nuts of building your Naha team for a creative shoot. We're going to have Damian Carney on May 7th. Such a self-genius man, not only a master stylist winner, but he shoots his own work. So what if you're at home and you can just get one model? Damien Carney is the guy to show you that. Then we've got, I call him the Quentin Tarantino of photographers for Naha. We have Babek on May 15th, who will be joining me live as well. And then this woman, she, she's almost the Madonna of our industry. All I have to say is Tabitha. We have Tabitha Coffee on May 22nd. Remember, if you're on the East Coast, all of these are live at 5 or live at 2. East Coast, 5 o'clock, 2 o'clock for the West Coast. Tabitha is going to be talking about how to build your brand. Whether you know it or not, folks, you are a brand. You have to start thinking as a brand, whether you work in a salon or whether you are running a giant business, you are and will always be a brand. And who better to talk to us about that than Tabitha? We love her. Can't wait to, to speak with her. And then we're going to wrap up our first series. I have many more people in the pipeline, but already we have Jamie De Grazia because, you know, her work is genius and we want to get that men's haircutting in there because the work is always so beautiful so remember naha is produced by the professional beauty association 
join PBA today. Remember that they have things they're doing, ways to get help, ways to get support, ways to figure out what you need to do in these difficult times. So please go to pre PBA dot, oh, sorry, probeauty.org, me and my acronyms, probeauty.org and join today. You have nothing to lose. You need to get involved. It's time for us to build our community. All right. So don't forget, Naha begins, entries begin June 11th, nahabeauty.org. And so now what I would like to do without further ado, she's like, when is it my turn? When is it my turn? I am going to bring on Chelsea. There she is. And we are going live. She has a surprise for all of us, I've heard. What is your surprise? Whoa! <laughs> That's right, good sir. That is bright. <laughs> is that a tiger shirt you have on? <laughs> uh, this is not Chelsea James. My name is actually Joe Exotic. <laughs> a okay. marketing wizard. I have a wide variety of male underwear in the gift shop at my zoo. Anything from bikinis to boxer briefs. I just had to. I watched that. I don't know if you've seen it, but I watched it and I was like, wait a minute. I got that guy's haircut. You so, know, since you gave me a little preview, yeah. I ran outside and got a, I'm I grabbed a Carol Baskin. You. <laughs> I hate Carol Baskin. You know, I ha I only had bougainvilleas in my backyard, but. <laughs> Dude, it took me forever to do this to my hair. I don't know. <laughs> it was so hard. I'm not going to lie. It was really hard. <laughs> well, I think the great Dolly Parton said it's a lot of work to look this cheap. It, it ain't <laughs> easy, baby. It ain't easy. Well, it is, it is so fantastic to, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm finally meeting you in person. I always share the favorite beverage of my guests. Um, I had to go with the bold. Woo! Bold? I don't drive. even know about that. Mm -hmm. I got to check that out. Is there a story behind Canada Dry? or? No, I mean, I'm just kind of basic. So it's just like coffee, and then I got to do a cutoff at 3 p.m. Otherwise, I'm a weirdo all night long. And I switch <laughs> over to Canada Dry. <laughs> this is amazing. All right, I'm going to dig right into it. You, I mean, I, in trying to get all the awards you want, I don't want to mess them up. So you, first and foremost, you're a salon owner, right? You own Forma Collective Salon in Denver, Colorado. And um, you always, you look so young. I, I need your cream, but you are a salon owner. You have won many awards and honors in Colorado and around North America, including the Colorado Hairstylist of the Year, Hairbrain Video Awards, to Wise, Southwest Stylist Awards, Hair Loss, uh, Hair Loss, Hair, hair Stylist. Loss, the Hair Loss Awards. <laughs> hair Loss Awards. That's, that, that's a good one. You won the avant-garde avant -garde category there. In 2017, I loved, obsessed with that collection. You won avant-garde 2019 Hairstylist Nominee of the Year Nominee. I mean, it keeps going and going. And you're nominated this year, right, for Southwest Hairstyling. And you were nominated for Hairstylist of the Year and Avant Garde. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's exciting. Girlfriend, sounds <laughs> like you know how to make some collections and how to win some collections. So we'll get into that. But w when did you first know you wanted to be or that you are? Because I don't think we have a choice when we become artists or hairdressers. But when did you first realize, oh, my God, I'm... I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. So I have an interesting story around that. Like we grew up really poor. So I didn't even know that there was nice hair salons. Like I had no idea that that was a thing. Um, and I had a kind of a bumpy path, you know, I was a messy kid. And so <laughs> I would, I, I would, I'm actually an alcoholic and an addict in recovery. And so right. congratulations super bumpy and I like yeah. joined the army and became a Patriot missile launcher and then but I'm like gay as it gets and so they were like no it, it was like don't ask don't tell time so you done told <laughs> yeah yeah and you know I just basically <clears throat> I like ended up going to rehab 
And when I got out of rehab, I lived in this guy's basement and he was a fashion stylist and he was short on models. And he was like, I really need you to be a model. And I was like, I'm not a model, but if you knock money off my rent, I'll do it. And so I went and did hair and makeup made us look crazy. And yeah. I had a friend there and he was like, I can't go out like this. You got to fix my hair. And so I fixed his hair and he's like, this is your thing. And I was like, what? And he's like, hair. And so it was awesome. Like uh, they took me around to a bunch of different salons and I was like, wait a minute, this is amazing. Like maybe I could do this. And I went to beauty school and I think I got really lucky. So I had a mentor named Dewey and he was a Tony and Guy artist. And everybody wow. told me like advanced education. Is I know Dewey. Said. Yeah. Yeah. He's everything. I love him. Yeah. And so I think the the deeper that I got into the industry and understood like education and brands, the more I realized how limitless it was. And, you know, I'm a, I'm definitely like a creative weirdo. And so the, the aspect of shooting is like, I, I don't know if I would be nearly as interested in the industry or engaged if that didn't exist. Right. Because I think it like gives us an opportunity to, to really play and get super weird. Yeah, no, I mean, I 100% agree. And you are, you are so good at what you do. And I love that you have already, <laughs> she's like, I was a weird ass bumpy road. Like, I feel like so many creatives have a similar story. And and I love hearing yours that it really evolved. You didn't, it, you didn't know you were going to do that, right? But somehow Adam. it, it found you. And yeah, congratulations. Yeah, I remember being a kid and being like, what job like what do you mean you like grow up and have to like do a job to have a house like the whole concept was i was like Ugh. and uh, what job is there i like didn't ever have that like i want to be a nurse or i i was like maybe a rock star maybe yeah um you know i like played guitar when i was a kid and so oh. it, yeah um okay. but you know drugs and alcohol kind of I mean, don't all the <laughs> rock bands have that? Isn't that? But I think it it brings it it brings the aesthetic of your work. I think it all ties together. Um, so, what I know this is everybody asks you this, but I have a feeling you're going to have a unique answer. Where do you find your inspiration? What what inspires you? Is it people, places, things? Yeah, I think that's an amazing question. So, I mean, I think a starting point there for me is like, obviously the greats initially inspired me. Like when I discovered Naha, I remember like looking at the photos being like, how, oh my God. Um, and, and so that felt exciting, you know? Um, but I think, you know, for the avant-garde collection, for example, I realized how much negative self-talk and how many like stories happened in my mind that would kind of restrict me from creating. And so, you know, some of those were like, who do you think you are? Or you haven't been in the industry long enough, or you're not good enough, um, on and on and on. Uh, you, you don't know how. Um, and, and throughout that process, I, I think that's what was the catalyst for the collection that I actually created. Because right. it was like, I always try to look at the things that I perceive as like negative or a problem, um, whatever I'm like hating on mentally. And mm -hmm. then I try to reverse engineer that into something that um, is solution based, you know, and so most of my inspiration for collections come from that aspect. So it was like, for for that, you know, I built these, <clears throat> these helmets. And it was almost like if I could just block out all of those negative thoughts, if I could just create a safe space where I was allowed to play and I was allowed to, when all of those thoughts didn't exist and I could just try and focus, that, yeah. that was the catalyst. And it was, it that changed everything. And what's so great is now I have something to talk about. And because yeah. of that, I was able to like create, I mean, it was shocking that I won, but, I, I got to meet all of my people that I've been looking at for years being like, oh my God, how, and they're so amazing. And they, 
you know, I got to create all these relationships and kind of destroyed all of that. I mean, it still exists. I think like fear is just a human thing. Yeah. Uh, but it allowed like really deep connections and a platform for relationships that is like a, an exciting thing for me. So the the reason and you're are you excited? You're the very first of many. We're going to do these forever. These I interviews. In you will I was always like, wait, be what? our first. And the reason, you know, we had many conversations about this and it was mainly because it's, it's all happening for you. It's happening what seems to most quickly, even though you've worked your ass off for years, right? In many ways. Um, and we want people to know of all ages that it's never too late. And we also want people to know that if they make the effort, that they get out there and create a shoot, that their life will change. And so when I hear you talking about meeting your heroes and so forth, that's one aspect of it. In what way has winning a Naha sort of opened up doors for you or, or changed your life in any way? Um, so I think from a credibility standpoint, obviously, like it's, I know that I was like, even getting nominated, I was like, there's no way. And I, I had the questions like, <laughs> Cause I don't, I didn't know anybody like I wasn't, yeah. you know? Um, and so I had the questions like, is it political? Is there, you know, there's gotta be, there's no way that, cause it was my first time entering. Um, <clears throat> and so when I did win, there is a certain amount, I think obviously my favorite part is the relationships because all, yeah. all of a sudden, um, and those relationships, like those people have been around in the industry for a really long time and they, they know people who know people who know people. And so what's exciting about that is your network really expands. And I think it's been like giving me credibility with brands um, and they're willing to like allow me to educate. I'm an international educator. And so um, I, I think that it's been a massive platform um, to be like, hey, I did this, you know, so I have some level of authority in, in a way and I, I've gotten to participate in shows and like kind of create um, and carry a message that is important to me, you know? Yeah. So it's really I mean, giving me a voice and apparently, you know, people want to interview me and it's, it's, I, it's unbelievable, honestly. Like I'm <laughs> famous on the night. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but it was my favorite part is like all of a sudden it's connecting me to, to all these people I would have never been able to reach. Yeah. Um, and, and think about this, like I know the editor of this magazine is why I know like your work was even in Salon News Asia in Taiwan and Japan. Like this, this it's like a flowering of your career, right? Where yes. on a global scale you're being recognized because Naha is the Oscars of the beauty awards. I mean, there are many great awards all over the world, but this is the one and I'm so happy to hear that. And I, I love how you have really harnessed it into further success in your life. I think it's incredible that, you know, it was your first time out. I think that is awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think it proves what we've been saying for years, that this is not political, that this is a fully blind exam at all the work. Um, and that, hundreds of people work tirelessly to make sure it's fair and you're the result of that so <laughs> well and I think it's interesting like I got some advice from um Vivian McKinder actually oh, I watched awesome. something about her and she was like you have to capitalize on the opportunity as well like you can win Naha and if you don't if you don't talk about it if you don't promote it if you don't continue to make good content like it doesn't necessarily matter you're kind of only yeah. as good as your last at bat um, yeah and i do think that that's totally true like there yeah. was i had to all the people that like congratulated me i had to work and like continue those relationships and send messages and figure out how i can continue to add value to those people i'm willing yeah. to like sweep your hair or assist or what can i learn from you like how can i capitalize on it as well yeah I love it. And also, I forgot to mention at the beginning, folks, there's a question mark um, at the bottom. You'll see like it looks like a stack of question mark cards. 
if you hit that and ask your question instead of comment, we can actually get that question to our yeah, fantastic like guest. A hair tutorial for Tiger King. <laughs> Let me know if you want some some content like that because it ain't easy. It just looks too good. I'm gonna tell you that, and I need to know when your next album's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd like to know. Okay. Well, so let's we we've talked about what Naha brought to you. Let's let's get into the mind of Chelsea Von James <laughs> and let's talk about your process. So what happens first? Take me to the beginning. So at the beginning it's a big brainstorm session. I like to start thinking about themes and concepts that matter to me because I think one of the great opportunities of Naha is realizing um, what what if you win? Like going that that far ahead uh, because you're gonna have a lot of interviews and and so what are you gonna say? Like what's it all for? And kind of finding your why. And so like I said, I like to think about concepts whether it's like uh, things, you know, as hairdressers, we have such a privilege, like there's such an opportunity in terms of even with our clients, like how can I make this like crazy hairdo um, or collection relevant and speakable for conversations with clients. So right. I'll take a concept like conformity, for example, that I know my clients are battling. It's like, I want, I want it to be edgy, but not too edgy. <laughs> but like, I want to, you know, and, and this different stuff that we're all kind of we're living in this crazy comparison world. And right. so I'll just look at like the themes and concepts that are kind of floating around or that I know people are experiencing. And then I try once I find the concept, I'll translate that into the the fundamental of the collection. Right. And like, for me, my next goal inside of Naha is hairdresser like that. It's so hard uh, because it's five images. And so, uh, and it's, it's the full well-rounded deal. Um, oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I'll divide <laughs> out and be like, okay, so technically speaking, um, I'll try to think of things that really push me, uh, things that I'm really interested in. So I'll create like maybe some copy and, and mood board. And I think choosing a team is massive. Like the photographer that I love to work with is Natasha Gershon. She okay. is incredible. Um, and I think once I, once I have the concepts, then we have an, a full circle call and talk about different angles and ways that we would shoot it and what that kind of looks like. And then we go to the hair store and get all the pieces. We pick our colors and then we get to work. I mean, it takes months for me to build a collection just because you have to think about, you know, the, the angle that it's being shot and like, what kind of face does that, that person have? How are you going to express this, this mood or, or this yeah. concept that you're trying to portray? Um, and so that's a bit about the process. Did that, okay. I know that we have like some, insane experts that are really going to dive deep into that <laughs> oh that. no we want all of you we did get some questions and the hysterical thing is sabrina you asked what your inspiration is um dallin sorry i got a wonk eye and some contacts in um she'd love to know your inspiration and uh, milton fed i think i read that right um where did you come up with your concept so um i think all three of the three of those are being answered and to all three of you i will i will dig deep so we find out how she creates her mastery um and to uh velvetica can i enter uh an aha collection that i've entered in a, other award shows i want you to go to the um probeauty.org website for the first time in history the answer is yes um there are some requirements like how old the work is and so forth um, but make sure you read those rules specifically. I don't want to lead you wrong. Um, but yeah, just like the Oscars, man, you, you, you know, they, they can win a golden globe. They can win, you know, a Bammy or what, you know, you can win other awards. So, um, if you spend the money, if you put the work in, we want you to be able to enter it everywhere. Um, and so that is a decision we made a year ago to launch for this year. So it's a good year. If you have a collection, Maybe you, you can't afford a shoot right now or can't get a model in your studio. Um, so it would be a good time to do that. Thank you for that question. Um, so all the creativity talks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little granular on you 
We talked yeah. about your photographer, but can we talk about what is a team to you? Are you are you a one woman show where it's like, look, it's me, two, t two turntables and a microphone and somebody shoots it. How many people are on the team and, and who are they? Or not, you don't have to be specific with names, but. Sure, so um, the way, and it's kind of always different, but the way that I like to do it is like, so I have a salon um, and anyone that wants to participate is more than welcome to, but I also don't, I don't want, I want them to do whatever they want to do, but I'm very like hands-on in terms of like the, the actual building of things. So it depends on uh, the collection, like for something avant-garde, it was uh, volunteers from the salon. And for the nitty gritty stuff, it was like, you know, we rolled a bunch of dreads and, and it was five of us all sitting around eating pizza, like laughing, <laughs> but working till like our hands are raw. You know? Whistle so while that. you work. <laughs> exactly. There's a that aspect of the team. But like Jesse James, for example, I love yeah. to collaborate with her and she'll help me um, with picking wardrobe pieces or fashion stuff. So uh, some, and that always looks different every year. It depends on like the theme or the mood that we're portraying, what we're inspired by, et cetera. Um, and so either we're like going out to Buffalo exchange and like finding pieces. So I know what my strengths are and that's definitely not it. Um, it, I, I like the hair portion. You're rocking some fashion right now, Tiger. You know that's right. You know, it. look at this bling. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, it depends. Like there's certain things that, that nobody else but me can do uh, just ethically. And then yeah. there's stuff that it's like, man, come on, guys, help me, please. And so with team and prep, it, it does take a lot of work for me because shoot day is really expensive. And so you have to plan out yeah. like who you're shooting first, how it's going to go, and exactly the order that you're prepping the girls, whether you're putting wood caps or braids or anchors or, um, or whatever. I mean, there's, there's yeah. depending on the looks, but I think like with the nitty gritty part of the process too, is figuring out like trying to make something that hasn't been done. Um, oh that goodness. is like something that I am obsessed with and really care about. It like helps fuel me to keep going inside of the why. Um, yeah. So, yeah, with team, I mean, there it's it's everything, um, and we make sure that like, hey, this is the foundation and and the reason that we're doing this shoot, and it becomes so fun. There's no way I could do it without a team. Period. Like, yeah, it's impossible. It's a team. Yeah, More questions impossible. here we have too. Um, so Leslie is asking, so do you, when you think about what's happening in the world right now, is that going to impact your creative direction? Um, well, I can't, I can't foresay, but yes. Um, I, I think that that's the whole point is like, I think that they're right now, like the main theme, especially for me personally right now is fear. Like, for example, I got a no today on the PPP. Um, and th I know that they're inventing a new stimulus package. Um, but that is terrifying because I kept my people on payroll and like, what if and oh my god. And I think there's some of this like trust the process. And I think that there is look for options and fight for what we love. And it, it is terrifying. And there's also like this aspect of isolation. And so that's sort of when, when I'm thinking about like the problems, I'll maybe call that the theme and then I'll try to reverse engineer something inspiring about that, that like, that I can find and dig for to keep me going um, yeah. and utilize that as the foundation for the collection. And then, you know, it allows me to get closer to everybody and I can form an actual community off of stuff like that. I love that. You were, you were so smart, girl. What, what methods do you utilize? And this is another question. This is from Eric Um, What methods do you utilize when you feel stuck in your creative process? Uh, that is knowing, like accepting <laughs> upfront that that is part of it um, is something to swallow early. And if you don't experience that, I feel like something is wrong. 
like you're not pushing yourself hard enough and so I make sure that I have like an alignment of people that I can call people that uh either on on the team or safe people where yeah. I can be like oh my god I'm losing it and this is so <laughs> ugly and I'm terrible and I don't know why I'm doing this and then there <laughs> yeah so I I just think knowing that it's part of the process will will make you sort of comfortable if you know that every single person that has done and participated in Naha experiences feeling stuck. <laughs> um, and sometimes that is the greatest catalyst for what you're about to invent. Yeah. Like a problem always makes stuff great. Yeah. Do as you, as um, you push past it. <laughs> Milton wants to know if you practice your looks first on mannequins. Uh, no. So, well, sometimes it depends on, on the technique. So a lot of the time I, I will, um, it, it's not that common, but I'll build a lot of, of things on mannequins, um, or shaved mannequins, um, or Tata and, heads. And I use Tata heads right there. That's I call right. <laughs> Tata heads. I love that. Tata heads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I think, no, no, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, well, it's like for something like really intricate for braids or placement or something like that. I, I draw them out, but I'm like, it ain't pretty. Yeah. But I know what I'm doing and like, I can, I'm very like idealistic so I can like see what I'm going for. Yeah. But I also don't become obsessed with like that one vision. Like you kind of got to work with it day of as well. And just, right. like, I know, you know, my shapes and, and how I'm going to get there. But sometimes you, you, it, it's ugly and you got to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> and you need a real, you need a real girl under there sometimes to, to make sure. Totally. So um, how do you know when you have the right shot? Because I, I, I'll say as a judge, it just kills me when I see, you know, five photos, four are winners and one is let's just say not a winner and there's it's, always it's the there shot. anyway <laughs> you know there's always that that one i feel like um and so a part of that is my team so like i'll have natasha and jesse and randa and brooke like the girls are around and there's just when we get the shot it's like we're so connected to um you can just feel it it's like something that happens and we're like we got it and we celebrate <laughs> it. we That's make sure one. that we celebrate our wins but there's always a kind of a weak-ish look and so i in, in terms of the pre-planning i'm always trying to think okay like if i know that I have a bunch of like really big or intricate stuff, but it's for hairdresser and I have to show an interesting haircut. Maybe I think, okay, I need to jazz it up a little bit on the wardrobe yeah. on this look, or, or maybe that in terms of the placement that you submitted in, like, I think that's really important as well. So yeah. it's sort of like, almost like music, you know, like uh, a bass notes, like, it's like uh, and then, yeah. the angels and come have, out, like that wild <laughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We have a lot of questions for you. Um, so uh, Dallin is asking, who are your hair heroes on social? Okay. I mean, th the list is so outrageously long. Um, and I think it depends Follow you. on for what. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I actually love Dallin. He's incredibly talented. He's a hero in his own right. Oh, um, nice. But from a Naha perspective, I mean, one of my really true mentors is Ruth um, Roche. She's amazing. Sharon Blaine's a hair, hair hero. She's outrageous to me. Um, Charlie is incredible. Like I, I was lucky enough to be able to assist him and he was, he's ah. a big part of my foundation for shoots. Okay. Um, I think Emma and Damien, uh, Tabitha, uh, it's, it's, the list is so, Sanvia, it's so, long i yeah. feel almost overwhelmed by that yeah. question <laughs> but, but yeah that's and i i'd say keep following you and uh and 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 you'll list them <laughs> totally where where do you, um we have from uh leslie uh this is a good question where, where do you find models when you live in a rural area say you're not manhattan or 
Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, there's only really one kind of agency here in Denver. And so it is really tough uh, to find epic models. And mm -hmm. we can't book them really long time in advance, which is frustrating to me. Um, so that is, is a really hard situation. Um, it might be worth because models are, it's a photography competition. Mm -hmm. Models really matter. And in terms of like having a professional, you don't have to have a professional model. Um, but my experience is if you don't, it takes way longer to get the shot. And yeah. it's, it ends up being also more expensive because the photographer and everybody's time that's there. And mm -hmm. so it might be worth going to New York. And like, I know, like if you shoot with Bobek, I mean, there's ways that you can like pre prep the collections and pre choose in some of those larger areas. Um, that that's an idea. Or if I mean, there's pretty people everywhere. And yeah. so if, you, if you're really on a shoestring budget, you need to start marketing and putting out ads and interviewing different people um, that aren't actually models that and know that the shoot is going to take a little bit longer and you've got to be willing to pay the photographer a little bit more. Or yeah. you can be like epic like Damien and shoot your own stuff. I know, um, right? <laughs> but I know that there's pretty people everywhere. And I'm, with, I'm with you. Yeah. That corn fed middle America can be so beautiful. You just got to look and you know that right. reach out. Get yeah. out there, get in the fields, find you one. In the fields, beauty in the fields. Um, from oh uh, Becoming Kayla, any tips on how to save money on Naha shoots because of what's going on with COVID? And before you answer that, um, Erica Cali Mooney, if I didn't answer yours, just send it again. I'm, ha I'm having a. Uh, age memory loss <laughs> oh my God. so what are some so you know i think you've covered some things but like what's your what's your really straight to a shoestring budget idea right now or is it something you can't even think about or um well it is tough because you know right now we're we're stuck inside all the hair stores are closed down and so i'm trying to like ethically source hair online but i'm also afraid to invest in that because i might lose my salon and you know it, it's right. it's right. really scary for sure um but i have old hair that i work with um but i think there's a lot of ways that you can maybe cut when you're thinking about it and i know there's interesting stuff that has been done inside of like wardrobe for example which can be a huge expense for naha so i've seen like body painting stuff um i've seen just getting creative on like cutting up your own clothes or cheaper clothes um, in a really artistic, interesting way using unconventional materials, I think is a neat idea. And so, um, and then, you know, the idea of not using professional models, but extending or, or maybe a photographer that, I mean, it, it's hard because if there's always sacrifices, it's a, Absolutely. it's an expensive thing, but, you know, just brainstorming off the top of my head. Those are some considerations. Yeah, don't buy Prada. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. Charlie, at, at this, um, what are your thoughts on body shape, uh, inclusivity, diversity in hairdressing and photography? I'm completely in love with that concept. Um, and it's hard because I do feel like the the consensus and world we're kind of living in is really slow moving inside of that. You know, yeah. um, we're finally to a place where I feel like all big brands in the, globally, like Coca-Cola and whoever, they all have like two Asians and like a black guy and like one white lady, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, what be, like how basic is that? So that is a <laughs> bit frustrating for sure. And I yeah. think even tokenism, like, so, yeah, and the body positivity, I think, like, the intention of the the movement is really beautiful, but it's not all inclusive, and, yeah. and society isn't there yet, and it's a photo competition, and so I think it's up to us to really kind of push the boundaries there and figure out how to make it aesthetically beautiful. 
um, and, and how to show like what, what you really see is beautiful. And it's hard to do that through a photograph, but I think it's a hundred percent doable. If you have the vision, if you have the right photographer, the right lighting, the right concept and, and really focus on the craft, yeah. um, it, it can be an incredibly exciting, really powerful thing. So I agree. Celebrate I, everybody if you can. And if it works for the shoes, uh, sh shoes, shoots. Leanne is asking, I, I know you covered this a little bit earlier, but um, your influences, out, are you inspired by things outside of the industry? Are there things that have sparked your creative process? Uh, I, I think everything sparks your creative process from machine guns to <laughs> living in <Certainly>. basements. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, watching masters in also not just our industry, but other industries, um, yeah. and reading their biographies and watching what they went through and the way that they transformed their experiences as a catalyst for uh, what they ultimately created. So whether yeah. that's through art, music, dancing, I mean, I think that really gets my heart beating hard and I love yeah. to look inside like if I see something beautiful I love to find out about the human being that created that and what was their story and how did they yeah. get there because it's so brilliant you know so I think that does have it's so inspiring uh just to even look at whatever the piece that's created but don't get me started if you <laughs> find their autobiography and figure out like what's happening inside and like, how, doo, how doo, that doo. happened like that double dar that, darly stuff <laughs> that gets me going yeah yeah chemistry salon was asking uh hopefully I'm, i read this right with my one good eye right now um how many hours are you spending on shoots per week um so for the avant-garde shoot i feel like that took two months and i spent oh. every every free second I had and sometimes we were up and and <laughs> like I wow. had my mom helping like Jesse we were working because it was so intricate it took so long to build like those pieces I had so much hair fabric and it took uh -huh. it that so it depends on the collection it depends for avant-garde like that is the most time taxing consuming thing because to make something completely out of hair that's like never yeah. been seen that takes forever uh to create all the different textures and so that took me two months of hours on hours and sometimes till two in the morning like that that was the hardest one of the hardest things i've ever done plus like educating running a salon like that was intense yeah, yeah. you embody really what what avant-garde should be because it is about that process it is you know, there's Photoshop and then there's La Chapelle, right? Mm -hmm. I have a I have a portrait of Tori Amos signed by Tori standing inside of a, a giant lily. Everybody's like, oh, that's good Photoshop. No, she's freaking standing in a giant lily in the middle of a cornfield because it's La Chapelle. You know what I mean? Like that's just- It gives me goosebumps. That's what avant-garde is. If you can't make it happen don't do it, right? You, it's it's about pushing the boundaries of your imagination to these places. Often they're dark places. <laughs> but, well, <laughs> you know, but some of my process with avant garde, for example, I had these ideas and concepts, and it took me hours and hours and hours of, in theory, this is going to work, of building it, and I would do it, and it didn't work. It would like collapse oh. or flake or it didn't hold or I needed a different, it was, so that also made it really time consuming. But the, how my hairdressing skills and my concepts and me as an artist, like it took me to levels that I'm beyond grateful for. Like I understood my craft much more deep. Yeah. So it's like worth it. I mean, what do you got? So what? What are you going to do? Yeah. Jeffrey has offered to be a model for you just so Thank we're, God. we're gonna need you in a uh in an exotic wig Jeffrey so we're gonna need photos of that if it's the dress <laughs> I'm thinking about he's gorgeous oh gonna like, need pictures Jeffrey oh my god you're gonna die <laughs> he's so beautiful <laughs> um I saw a question it was a good one about do you find it sometimes gets confused with 
fantasy and avant-garde. And and as a as a judge and as the chairman of Na, yes, hard fantasy yes. is magical <laughs> fantasy things. That is some badass hairdressing. Don't get me wrong; it's a giant spaceship or ship or creature coming out of their head. But that is fantasy. Avant-garde is supposed to be wearable <laughs> you know and and that's what i loved about your you you could wear that and folks wearable could be anything you know gaga has shown up to the grammys you know like that's wearable because she wore it it's a meat dress it's <laughs> i'm an alien pod um but i think yeah it, it's a good question and thank you for asking it people do confuse avant-garde with fantasy would you agree i think taste <laughs> in general is something really hard to explain formulate teach like taste is taste is hardcore um and i think you know like for example real avant-garde when i think about gaga even like yeah. she wore that for a message right like, that's the reason it was so unbelievably powerful and right. got so much like yes it's insane and disgusting kind of but also beautiful and like ha you know brings up all of these emotions but what it stands for is just next level and that is avant-garde that is avant-garde and and you you mentioned purpose and we call your entire segment and i'm looking for other questions as well um about purpose right and i know that's important to you and then i'll i'll take uh becoming kayla's question right after that but can you talk about for those who have just joined us what does it mean to you creating with purpose what does that mean i mean for me with everything that i do it sort of like goes back to the why and for me my ultimate why is connection like that's what i understand you know you can do anything in life but if no one's with you it doesn't necessarily matter um right. if you're not that that becomes my purpose and so i think you know i i know that for me participating in naha ultimately is for connection i want to connect to my other my hairdressers my people I want to connect um, to this industry. I want to connect, maybe even reach outside of the industry with a message that matters to me. So for me, purpose is like, that's an easy deal. You know, yeah. it's always reverse engineered from like, what is my why? Um, and, and it's crazy because from that purpose, I get all of these extra things that are great. Like I become a better hairdresser. I, you know, there, there's things that are, I am disciplined. I, yeah. you know, I yeah. understand taste. I know much more about photo shoots. I right. you know, yeah. all of a sudden I'm saving time on something that was insanely hard before. Um, <laughs> so I get all these benefits, but yeah, purpose is, yeah. is, I totally agree. Everything. Yeah. Last question from Kayla. We're going to, uh, is do you shoot inside, outside studio anywhere? So uh, one of the reasons for getting the salon was so I can make everything movable and do education and photo shoots in there. Yeah. Uh, because I think, you know, um, I, I, I love Damien, his inspiration for Beautiful. being that. And right now we're in a content, content driven world. And so I've utilized that to learn how to like do green screen videos and stuff like that. Okay. Um, really understand like the camera better. So I usually shoot in the salon. I've done outside photo shoots for different things. Okay. Um, obviously natural light is amazing, but a lot of the times for lighting hair and collections, I really want to be able to control the light depending on the look or mood that we're trying to shoot. Yeah. Um, and when I say I, I mean Natasha, but I learned so much about how it kind of all works. And yeah. then because I understand, then I can like project cooler stuff in the future. Like yeah. I get better at better at making stuff. I love that. And yeah, and let's not forget outside the wind. Oh, totally. <laughs> like, it's completely unpredictable. Like, excuse me. Yeah. That's not how it looks. Um, but if I didn't have that, I would just like probably rent a studio. <laughs> You know? Yeah, you're so lucky that you have this space. Well, um, I don't know if it's luck, baby. I work really hard to get that. <laughs> so we we have um, 
in my other show, MSC TV, we, um, we play this and that. With Naha, we want to get a little funkier and a little more creative. So I'll do some rapid fire questions. We have about five minutes left here. So um, are you ready to play? We're going to play a game. Okay, baby, I'm ready. <laughs> Give it to okay, me. Okay, I'm going to get to know you. I'm, We're I'm all going to get to know nervous. her a little better. All right, here's our game. Better have your swig at Canada Dry, girl. Okay, give it. You are a new addition to a crayon box. What color would you be and why? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, white trash or <laughs> smoker's teeth or something. <laughs> smoker's teeth. Oh, my God. I that think it's means... like one of those, you know, I definitely I think it has such a negative connotation, that word. Um, but I think, given my journey, I'm like proud of it and and can kind of change the context. <laughs> you seriously have just created something that would be a great like bachelorette party gift, right? I'm like telling you, <laughs> trailer colors, country yeah. color, whatever you know, like city colors. Oh my god, I love it. Um, you you leave this interview and you walk outside and you find a $10 million winning lottery ticket on the ground, what would you do? I would save my salon and then save <laughs> other salons. I would just give it to everyone that needs it. I would give it until it was gone. <laughs> yes. But I would stay in the industry. I feel like they're not really focusing on us right now. And then if there was anything left over, I'd invest it just in case this happens again. Right, good <laughs> choice. Know, like, oh. Good, good choice. Um, since you drive a tank or a gun or something, I assume you drive alone occasionally. When you drive alone, um, what do you think about when you're in the car alone? Oh, God, that's good. Um, I think, well, a lot of times I wonder if I've shit my teeth. <laughs> I wonder, <laughs> I no, I like love to listen to music in the car. Um, uh -huh. And sometimes I do like to be in silence and just reflect and try to get present and be in the moment. Um, or sometimes I get my groove on to like, you know, whatever's giving it to me that day. <laughs> I love uh, that question <laughs> is coming up. Oh. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would that be? And what would you do with it? Oh, God, I would have the ability to make money, endless amounts of money. And wow, that's what I would do. Because I think if like everybody had enough, it, everything would look we would look be in a very different world. Um, if we had that like fundamental security aspect covered, yeah, it would be a very different world. Um, and mm -hmm. that's something that's really exciting to me. So she holds up her arms and is like, <laughs> you know, Gosh, and I was just like, ta, 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 ta. get you yours. And then we were all just like, yeah. Your costume's green. It says make it rain on the front. You know? <laughs> I mean, come on. I love it. Do you have any hidden talents we don't know about, Chelsea? Um, I don't know. I I like I'm learning the piano. I play guitar. Um, I am I paint. But nothing like I'm like good at doing it. Yeah. You know? But nothing like I feel like some people have weird talents. I couldn't think oh. of anything super weird. What is I, it? I was a drum major in high school, so I actually know how to twirl a baton. Oh my God, that's <laughs> so amazing. Will you please make a video about that after this? Gonna do it, gonna I'm do it. I beg you. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> um, what's your favorite 90s jam? Oh God, that is like impossible to pick. That's my era. I'm like, what jam isn't amazing? Like, Gun I was like, Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice. Yeah, like, that's a Patrick good one. Warren G. Um, yeah. I even, anything Nirvana, like, I was all, you know, summer uh, teenager, like, oh my God, so <laughs> get <good>. my heroin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's impossible. <laughs> that is an impossible salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. God. I yeah, mean, it's, it's yeah, it's everything. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's oh, talk about you. That's my me. era. That's like my go-to music. I, I can't even get over like Groove is in the Heart, I'm right? Like you. Delight. Boom, boom, no, 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 no. Like, how do people recover from that? Yeah. You, you just let it live throughout <laughs> your, in your soul, strong in your soul for 
<laughs> and I will twirl and post. I'll work on that. Oh. Um, what's the last thing you watched on TV besides... Tiger King? <laughs> um, I watched... Oh, I just watched Wild Wild Country. Me too. Oh, my God. I've, I've been always... Forever. Sheila. Sheila hard. Sheila crazy. <laughs> Sheila crazy. But I, I love the idea. Since I was little, I was always obsessed with like if I had to create a society like how would I do it how would you yeah. use, like what would you do with the criminals what would you do you know and yeah. so that show was super fascinating to me super we're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of people mentioning the 90s why don't you all right now type in your favorite song from the 90s and it will be remembered forever on the PBA website oh my god we can make a playlist <laughs> we can make a playlist I love you're always thinking. If you Not could be just any animal, if you could be any animal, and by the way, before I knew you were dressed up as the, you know, our good friend, if you could be any animal in the world, what animal would you be? Hey guys, we, we cut off abruptly there. <laughs> I was with Chelsea. This is Michael Sean Corby, um, chairman of Naha, and I'm so sorry to cut you off like that. I do apologize. We have to say a goodbye. So Chelsea, uh, if you could get back in there. She's like, what the hell? He just hangs up on me. Um, hopefully Chelsea will send me an invite again. Let's see, where can I find her? Where has my Chelsea gone? So everybody was um, in the middle of sending their favorite 90s jam. We want that to be there forever. Oh, wait, I've got someone else. I'm sorry, I'm looking for Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Well, if I don't get her back on, I apologize. We ran our mouths just a little bit too long. Um, let me search for Chelsea. Chelsea. Uh, maybe, she, maybe she was like, okay, that's drop the mic moment. I don't see Chelsea there. Um, anyway, I, in closing, which we should have done properly, and I apologize to all of you who are watching, um, in closing, we had Chelsea Von James on with us today. I think you would all agree she is, is a fantastic guest, and we would love to have her back again. There she is, Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea. Asked to be, asked to be. Um, I, I couldn't imagine ending this without her. Um, and so she will appear. The Tiger King is back in poop. Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, apparently we ran our mouths, as they say in the South, for, for a minute longer than Instagram allows. It was like, bye. Mm -mm. Bye. Y'all are done. Nobody care what kind of animal you won't be. It's a tiger. <laughs> So let's let's pick up where we left off. What animal would you be and why? Um, that's a really good one and really hard. <laughs> but I think that I would be a shark. They have a like, shark. Yeah, they have oh. low level. It was between like a bird and a shark. Okay. Low level predator, and I just feel like there's so much we don't know about the ocean. Yeah. Like we don't know. We know more about space than we do about the ocean. It's really sad. And so, as a shark, I feel like you can get down in anywhere and see mm -hmm. everybody, see what's happening at lower risk. You know? And they can do that old. stuff at, in two feet of water, which scares the crap out of me. <laughs> but <laughs> if you ever had one next to you in two feet of water, it's kind of like, ah! No. <laughs> yeah, it's not super I mean, fun. I'd like to scare you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 no. Another reason I would want to be a shark. <laughs> Chelsea, this was the best ever. We have so many comments. Uh, we'll try and gather the songs. Um, but what most people were saying is what we already knew is that she's so smart. She's so inspiring. I can't believe an hour went by that quickly. Thank you for getting my mind off all the horrible things that are going on right now. So they just love you, Chelsea. So we will definitely do something again in the future. I, love PBA and I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to know how to talk to people. Like, I don't even You're know. You're really, really good at it. You're really good at it.
Yeah. Well, I, thank you for having me. I'm so <laughs> grateful. Thank you, PBA, Pro BD Association. I love you guys a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we we love you too and we thank you so much for being our very first um live chat for pro beauty and uh -huh. have a wonderful day my tiger king and remember cats and kittens carol baskin <laughs> i'm gonna get you carol <laughs> peace and love cats and kittens Thank um, you for your time. You're an amazing host. You're so thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you soon. And uh, let's go grab a Canada Dry together next time. Let's we'll see get you, it. Right? Clank. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> see you next time. Thank you, All everybody, right, for watching. We'll see Bye, you next guys. time. Bye.